Hello everybody and welcome, this is DDS here bringing you guys another quick little tutorial video. Now I am going to be doing this tutorial video sort of as a precursor to another video that I have planned, uh, which you guys will see probably in the coming months or coming weeks actually, given how quickly I play these games. But regardless, if you can't tell by the title, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Pokehex on Pokemon XD Hill Darkness and Coliseum. Now I will only be showing Coliseum in this video. Because I'm probably going to save XD Go Darkness for its own video. Um, but I found out uh, through some experimentation, I actually didn't look this up, that you can actually use uh, PK Hex through Dolphin uh, with Pokemon XD Go Darkness and Coliseum save files. I did not know that. Um, I did some research about it, and I had, because uh, I was, what I was doing, I was just simply going through my files, and I, uh, I found uh, the GameCube file. Just out of curiosity, I clicked on it, and lo and behold, it loaded. So, Let's go ahead now, um, <clears throat> unlike with some of the other methods to use PK Hex in uh, other Pokemon games, in XD Go and Coliseum there's a little bit of a workaround that you have to do. It's nothing major, but it's kind of a similar way that you have to do for the DS Pokemon games. Uh, so in regards to this one, we'll go ahead and show you real quick. Um, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to open up this Coliseum file to show you that I've actually done a little bit of uh, altering already. And as far as I know, this is the most updated version of Dolphin. Uh, I don't know if there's one that's further updated than the one that I currently am using, but I have it set to auto-update, and I also check for updates every week just to see if there's anything new. Uh, it's also why, like, the little frame rate counter looks a little bit different now, and I actually think it looks a lot smoother, because uh, the one that was on the left side from the previous uh, version just kind of popped out too heavily. But thankfully, this one does just fine. But yeah, this is going to be a little precursor to one of my future videos. Um, as you can see, I've already done uh, some PK hexing in this. Uh, so I've already PK hexed these Pokemon here. Um, make everyone female. It's because I, have how best. I like the color red more than I like the color blue. That's really my reasoning for that. Um, people might think otherwise, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I also have these guys over here, purified all of them. Um, but what I haven't done much yet of with is these three here. Okay, so these are still fully utilized Shadow Pokemon. Uh, I did Pika Hex them, but I forgot to change their um, uh, various different things about them. I changed their stats, but I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what exactly the deal with that is in this video. So since I just go ahead and show that off, it's going to exit out of here. I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Memory Card Manager GC. Once you click that open, go to the Browse section that it offers you. And then it should automatically open up to the folder where your memory card data is stored. If it does not come here, then all you have to do is go through the folders on your computer to find out where it is. Usually it's located on the C drive, users, owner, documents, whatever, emula whatever file you have designated the Dolphin emulator, and then the GC folder in said emulator. Now if you're using the European files, I mean, obviously you'll use the European memory card here. But of course, I'm using the USA file, so I'll just load the USA file here. Now, the way you do it, as you can see, we already have all the book, all the uh, games that I have for the GameCube on my emulator, all the files you can see here. Now, I just select the X, or not the XDV, I'm sorry, the Coliseum save file that I have here, and then I'll just go ahead and hit export. And as you can see, these are kind of all the files that I've already exported for this. Now, what I usually do to kind of keep track of which ones I've done and which ones I haven't done. Um, I always change the name of the file by adding a number to the end of the file. So in this case, let's just add 56, just for, for shits and giggles. So then that'll save and export the file. Now we are done with this for now. So we'll go ahead and bring PKHex to the center of the screen. And then I'll simply go to File, and to Open. And then I'll scroll down through here, and you'll see right here, the GCI file, Pokemon Call CM56. We'll double-click it, and boom, there it is. Now, um, <clears throat> you guys might be wondering, like, why there are red hazard symbols um, on all of my Pokemon in here. It's not because their movesets are illegal or anything like that. It's actually because of a weird thing with the type PID mismatch. I don't exactly know how to change it, but uh, just to give you an example, I'll go ahead and click view on this jump luff that I have. Um, and uh, the jump luff that I originally caught was a male. So when I changed it to female, it gave me a type PID mismatch. But when I change it back to male, well, it still says it's type PID mismatch, but yeah. I don't know why it does that, but for whatever reason, it does. Um, Pokemon is still completely legit otherwise. 
Uh, you can actually change that exact same piece of data through an action replay code that I might share in a, in a future video. Move that over here. Um, but you can do pretty much everything you can think of to do in XEO Dartmouth Coliseum through this editor. Pick a hex is incredibly useful, I'm telling you. But yeah, so I'll just go ahead and eh, we'll just go ahead and select this swallow here. So of course, right click it and go to view. You can change obviously natures, level, make it shiny or non-shiny, change the nickname, change the held item, change the friendship. Uh, Swablu only has one ability, so you can't change that. But you can change the language, which I never see any reason to do so. Uh, then of course there's down in here. This number I've learned from experimentation, do not change it. <laughs> it doesn't fuck with the game, but it doesn't really do anything positive either. Um, this number simply tells you at which order you caught the shadow Pokemon in. So Swablu here was the 18th shadow that I obtained, okay? So because of that, I just leave it alone, okay? Now, you can do two things here. You can either unclick this box that says shadow, and then drop this number to zero, and then the Pokemon will not be shadow at all. Or you can simply drop this number to zero, which is what I'm going to do, and leave this box of shadow checked, and then that means that its heart gauge will be ready for purification, which I'll show you guys that in a minute as well. Um, I always leave the origin game and all that kind of stuff untouched. Uh, you can also alt obviously alter stats. Um, I always alter like base stats and you know give them certain uh, EVs and certain stats. You can also alter move sets as well. Um, since Swablu doesn't have as many good moves as Altaria does, I didn't really do much to it, but. That's how you do that, and then you just, I'm just going to go ahead and right click it, and then click set. Now, as you can see, though, the um, outline of Swablu here is not purple anymore. That does not mean that it is not a Shadow Pokemon anymore, it means that it's ready to be purified. I don't know why that happens, but it does. So I'm also going to do, I'm going to do the next three here, because I have to do these for my videos anyway. Uh, so we have here, we have a hit on top. And for this one, you know what, for shits and giggles, I'm going to make it shiny. Uh, because if I remember correctly, shiny Pokemon in XD and Coliseum, when they're shadow Pokemon, don't look the same as they do in other games. I believe that they don't even uh, they don't even appear shiny in their shadow form. They only appear shiny when you're purifying them. But uh, same with deal with this one. I'm going to drop the heart gauge number to zero and leave the shadow Pokemon portion checked. Uh, stats and everything I already altered, and the move set, of course, I altered as well. So we'll go ahead and set it. And lastly, we'll do the same thing with Sudowoodo here. Again, I already altered level, or I didn't, I didn't change level. With the Shadow Pokemon, before they're purified, I don't alter the level. But we have the item that it was already holding. Friendship doesn't really matter, but I'm going to boost it anyway. And uh, this thing, as you can tell, is going to take a while to purify. I don't exactly know the precise calculations, uh, like, base-wise, like how the numbers exactly stack up in regards to... Uh, the uh, stats changing for the um, heart gauge, but for all intents purposes with the editor, all that really matters is that it drops to zero. So then we'll go ahead and set him there. Uh, you can also alter your party, obviously. Um, I did that with Ampharos and gave it access to Fire Punch and uh, altered its hidden power to be exactly what I needed it to be. And I did that with various other Pokemon in here, too. Uh, you can also alter your trainer info just like you can with any other Pokemon game. Uh, there's not really any reason to do that. Uh, this, I don't even know why this is an option in, in Coliseum and XD, because you can't change your character's gender anyway. And then, of course, there's also the other box, which is for daycare. And this, I still don't know what it is, so I ignore it. Uh, then finally, we also have items. It's just the same way in the main series games. You can alter the items any way you see fit. Uh, yeah, I like to give myself Master Balls in, in Coliseum and XD just because... Uh, Catching Pokemon is kind of the point of the game, even more so than the main series, because, like, you're not only, you're, you're like, saving their lives. So it's, it's kind of, like, more of a meaning to it. And I don't really like struggling with catching Pokemon for, like, an hour. If you guys don't know my freaking Lugia video. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> so along with that, I also gave uh, 95 and all TMs. I think you can max it out to 95. I mean, it does say so right here, but I never bothered. And uh, same thing with berries. Uh, I actually haven't done that, so let me go ahead and give all the berries. You can have all berries in the game, so that's not an issue. So yeah, I have all the berries now, and uh, that's for uh, box or PC items. This is for key items, of course. I never touch key items, because it can interrupt story progression. 
And then, of course, we have the main items here, which I probably, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and give myself some full restores. Uh, full restores. I'll just say 99 of them. Oh, wait. I typed it in the wrong box. 99. Oh, there's an asterisk in there for no reason. That's fucking 96. That works now. <laughs> We'll just go ahead and click save there. So yeah, uh, that's about it in regards to that. So next thing you want to do, same way with the other Picky Hex uh, videos I've done, just go to export save and go to export main. Now this I always change as well. I never have the uh, the target file the same type as the uh, previous file. So in other words, I never have the exported file have the exact same name as the file used to create this one. Um, and also, Make sure, because this is done by, by default for some reason, that when you have save as type, if it says all files, it will not be read. Switch it to GameCube save file for this. Then it will be read. I'm just going to put 561, I guess. And, uh, that way I can tell the difference between the two. So then we'll just go ahead and click save. It'll say save exported. Hit OK. Then we can drag this to the side because we are now done with it. Now back over here on my GameCube memory card, it's kind of fucked up, but what we have to do is we have to delete this file completely. So just highlight it and then hit delete. Successfully deleted files. It doesn't give you any prompts saying, are you sure? So make sure you know what you're doing. Then you go here to import. And then all you go, all you do is you go down here and you click whatever file you used. Double click it, pops right up, X out, and then open up the emulator once more. Pretty simple process, it's nothing too complicated. Uh, this has also been kind of like an experiment for me as well to see about the shiny Pokemon alteration that I heard about. Because uh, I've never actually caught a shiny Pokemon in Coliseum, even though I've been playing this game for close to 14 years now. Uh, I've never I've never caught uh, a shiny Pokemon in game. I have caught a shiny Pokemon in Exeo Darkness once, but it was a shiny Hoppip that I caught at a Poke Spot. I've never caught in a shiny Pokemon, there was a uh, or Shadow Pokemon that was shiny. So we'll go ahead and over here. And yeah, actually it is shiny. That's interesting. So yeah, now we have a shiny hill on top. Uh, kind of looks weird, all shadowy and shit, but whatever. Uh, okay, so we have my Shadow Sotowoto and my Shadow Slablu all ready to be purified with the movesets that I gave them. And we're all good there. And then of course we will check in my items box, or my items bag. You will see that I have also obtained Hyper Potions at the bottom here, or Full of Stars, rather. Uh, and, of course, 995 of every fucking berry that exists in this game. So, yeah, guys, that's about it. I mean, it is, uh, it is a pretty simple process. I just like showing it off because, like, the videos that are going to be coming about, Col about Coliseum in the, in, the, in the coming months, month, months, whatever, uh, will have all of these alterations done to the file. Uh, prior to the upload or recording of said video. In fact, I'm actually going to be recording one of the clips for the next video, or one of the clips for this video, just after I'm done recording this. So, anyway, guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. And then always, if you have any ideas for future content, also let me know. Please, I'd be willing to do anything that you guys might suggest. So, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been ZDS here, making YouTube for one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next video.